Tonight, the spotlight turns to Bloemfontein in the Free State, where the prestigious South African Women in Science Awards are taking place, celebrating excellence and innovation among the country's top female scientists and researchers. The event not only honours their groundbreaking work, but also aims to inspire the next generation of young women to pursue careers in science, technology, engineering and mathematics. For more on this, let's now cross to our reporter, Kamohelo Siakwi. Kamohelo, very good afternoon to you. So speak to us about these awards. I mean, they do come at a very fitting month, Women's Month. Indeed, these awards come during Women's Month and they are indeed a celebration of women in science. They not honor the women in science, but also inspire the next generation. This is what the Department of Science, Technology and Innovation aims with these awards. But I just want to bring in immediately into this conversation uh, Dr. Mapu Timadiha, who is the Deputy Director for Emerging Researchers Program in the department to just talk to us about these particular awards. What is it that we are expecting tonight um, in the awards? Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Maputi Madira, and uh, SAWISA is all about South African Women in Science Awards, and it's a flagship for the department where we recognize and actually reward uh, South African women's excellence in research. That's what we are here for today. We came to uh, Bloemfontein because we want to rotate the provinces for visibility. We, can't, we want to tell all the women that it is possible. You can do it. We understand that there's going to be about uh, 30 categories um, in, the, in, the, in the awards tonight, which means that a large number of women will be honoured and they're coming from various universities um, from South Africa. Just talk to us about um, what is involved, you know, in terms of the different categories in the awards. So our awards, we start from the master's level, we do doctoral, and we also award young women researchers who are under the age of 40. We then also go to established women that have had their PhD for the longest time. So we have four categories that we're going to award this year, and of importance is the one that recognizes or rather uh, spotlight the legacy of Dr. Ivy Mazibe Kasaburi, who is a legend from uh, Bloemfontein. So we want to just uh, spotlight her legacy as well during these hours because we are in Bloemfontein. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the prizes that the winners are expected to win? Uh, the prizes ranges from uh, prize monies uh, from 70,000 to 100,000 and we also give them certificates and we do give them uh, tokens of appreciation from the likes of uh, you know nice uh, bags uh, as goodie bags because we are we, are, we, are, we have partnered with Laurel as our sponsor so we do have goodie bags for them from Laurel as our sponsor for 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 this award for women who've been uh, recognized uh, by the, the department how can they actually use this award to further their careers uh, this awards actually set you apart from everyone because as you can see they are able to be spotlighted by uh, media, they are featured in all our social uh, platforms so they are able to be recognized and in terms of networking they are able to network, collaborate even further after winning this awards. Thank you so much for your time doctor. Um, at this point I also want to bring in another who is actually um, the, the, the University of Pretoria's pride and joy, uh, Dr. Maureen Musia, who is the youngest PhD holder in the, uh, in the, in the university, um, and she is actually in the midwifery um, sector. Just talk to us about your research, being a finalist here tonight. What research were you involved in? Um, good evening to everyone. Thank you so much. I am Dr. Maureen Musia. I'm an advanced midwife specialist from the University of Pretoria. So basically my research, you know, is looking into an area, a very much under-researched area, which is looking at ways that we can collaborate, you know, between traditional birth attendants and also um, with midwives as well. And I'm also pioneering a project that is looking at bringing in your technology-informed program that is aimed to upskill midwives because what we found is that most midwives, when they leave, you know, um, when they leave university, when they get to practice, they are not that competent, they are not that skilled enough to, you know, manage emergencies and uh, obstetric emergencies and complications. So what I'm aiming to do is to build or to develop a technology-informed program that will capacitate midwives to be able to manage those emergencies because we know that, you know, maternal mortality is one of 
causes or one of the things why we are not achieving the SDG goals. So I'm actually aiming to look at ways that we can reduce maternal mortality and neonatal mortality. Mm -hmm. Now tell us how this research, once you know um, you have achieved what you want with it, um, will impact uh, communities. So with this research, we find that you know there are, there are causes or, or causes that, uh, in terms of the midwife skill, there are things that could have been avoided. You know, if midwives could early identify such risk factors, like for example, postpartum hemorrhage, if midwives were able or competent enough to, to, to recognize. Uh, emergencies in time, then we'll, we won't be having you know, mothers that are, you know, um, passing on or, you know, uh, maternal mortality. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually aiming to make sure that we don't have an alive, we always strive to have an alive mother and an alive baby at the end of the whole childbirthing process. So I'm aiming to actually improve and enhance and make sure that we are reducing the maternal and neonatal mortality in South Africa. Yes, that sounds really incredible. But there's a young girl who's sitting at home who's probably watching you at this point. What would you say to her if they wanted to pursue a career in STEM? Okay. So what I would say is that I'm also coming from, you know, the rural communities of Ngobela in Venda. You know, you sitting you wouldn't think that you can find yourself in such spaces. But I want to say to those young girls to say they should, you know, believe in themselves. They should just you know, it's not the limit. They should have a vision. They should aspire to, you know, improve or be something in terms of STEM. And you know, the is big enough, you know, to accommodate all of us. And what I would say is that they need to identify a mentor at a very early stage. You know, look up to somebody that is doing the kind of work that you want to do. And then you follow up and you have that mentor that can guide you. There's one of the mottos that I often live by, by saying we rise by lifting others. So that is very important to know that their dreams are valid and I'm an example to show that your dreams are valid. Thank you so much. Thank you so much Dr. Musia. They're just talking to us about her research. Um, she's one of the panelists here tonight and will probably be one of the recipients of the, the awards that I was talking about earlier uh, in those different categories that were mentioned. She's one of the uh, uh, nominees in the young researchers category here tonight. But as you can hear in the background I mean, the music is playing, the venue is set, it's just waiting for these particular awards to start this evening. With that, it's back to you. All right, thank you so much, uh, Kamukhelo. Apologies for that quality and sound. Kamukhelo Siekwi there at the uh, prestigious South African Women in Science Awards in Bloemfontein, of course, speaking there to uh, somebody that a lot of young scientists can look up to.